I hope I die soon. This is boring as fuck, man. I, I legit, from the bottom of my heart, I mean, I cannot understand how people love this game and have like thousands of hours in it. Like, the, the point is, man, I feel like I reached... This is the Zenith. I just started the game. It's the year 961. There's not much more to happen in this game. All the people that defend CK3, what else is going to happen in this game? I will do the Empire. Okay, that's not a big thing. What event, what what crazy stuff is going to happen here? Yeah, th this is the perfect argument why this game is not good. There's... I still have 500 years of content. And nothing will change. Nothing else is gonna happen, man. That is the truth of life. The only adversity I, have to, I will have to overcome is when I die that my brothers and shit have to be fixed. If I was a developer for Paradox and, and the CEO comes and says, Tommy, you and your team, you're the team manager, make CK free. You know what I will do? You know what I will do? I will look at what the people loved about CK2. I will be like, uh-huh, mm-hmm. And here we go. I'm gonna say something bad. I would fucking steal. I would steal so much from CK2 mothers. Uh-huh, Game of Thrones mod. Ah, that's cool. I would steal all this shit, World of Warcraft mod, Elder Kings, man. I will take all the good shit that the mother said, put it in my game, and make the greatest Crusader Kings free ever. What, what made CK2 so great? Why did yesterday, I literally showed a live on stream, uh, the, the World of Warships main commercial guy sent me an email that he's found me by my ck2 videos and loves them and thinks they're amazing why are they amazing why was my ck2 content the greatest content ever shown on the stream uh, why does i why do i always say the greatest thing ever on the stream was game of front ck2 and the honor the accursed ragnar love book why was that the greatest content ever because it was random it was like real life man you're like oh everything is going well boom something weird happens this happens it's like life man you never can predict what happens the next day here what is there to predict man the only thing to predict is that my sons are gonna fuck my realm bro not a great argument. The, the game is out one year. Where is the DLCs? I'm willing to pay 20 euros. Where, where is anything? You gave us a ruler designer where you can't make your own flag. Like sometimes, and especially for certain uh, companies, it seems like we're 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 not making progress. We're doing we're doing uh, degress. What's the different? What's the thing? Like you would think, the more time goes by, the world's evolving, engines are made, more and more people are involved in gaming. You will think games get better, but you 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 get you get uh, Empire of Sin, CK3, you get uh, Cyberpunk, you get Valhalla. It's like regressing, regressing. It's like we're going down. EA Games, <laughs> FIFA. Ah. It's, it feels so regressive. I mean, it all makes sense. The reason for that is that um, the capital people, the people that think about money, are the ones that uh, get raised into new positions. And I'm um, gonna save you, man. I'm dead. There's a video about this, uh, about Blizzard. It's that the nerds, the, the guys that love making video games, they don't get new positions. They don't become CEOs. It's the money people, the sales people. They get the positions, so everything is about money. And the nerds are fucked. Uh, Blizzard has a great example about this. One of the main developers of World of Warcraft has left and made his own company because they just... The nerds are getting fucked over, man. Thank you, Nevada. I'm gonna give slack here for developers, man. You guys probably want to make better games, but it's the money people behind you that are fucking with you. Yeah, this video. I don't know if I'll watch it right now. I would like a little break here and just watch something because I don't want to instantly get into the next game. It's also very early. I feel like watching this. I don't know. Is there more, maybe like a decline of video gaming uh, video? I actually don't know this video. That's good. The Blizzard video is very old. Didn't we actually start this video on 24 hour stream, but I was too tired? Let's I've go. I've been playing video games ever since. I actually I was don't know this video. Let's take a look. Well, my parents substituted That's me, dude. That's me. Pokemon Gold. Oh, dude, when, when I was a kid, you know, uh, Game Boy games were in this package here. And when you, dude, I, when I was a kid, when I was like 9, 10, and I saw a package under the Christmas tree that had this form, I was fucking going ham, dude. Three years oh, old. I was going ham, dude. Substituted a Game Boy Color in Pokemon He's playing Blue, blue man. Oh, I have Pokemon Blue White. Right? Look at this shit, man. Oh, that is childhood. Right here. Right here. Oh, don't don't destroy it. Oh, look at that. Look at that, dude. Fuck, man. That is that is my fucking treasure, man. Pokemon Blue Gold. I like gold more. Gold is so sick, man. As I grew up, there was so much to love about gaming. I got to play and experience countless amazing That is all! Oh, that was a Jedi Academy. Uh, wow, that game was so fucking good, man. Witnessed the that is a RuneScape? It grew and evolved after playing something like Oblivion. Dynasty Warrior! What? That's Oblivion! Oh, sorry. That's Halo Oblivion. 3. 
I would just Jedi Academy, kind of one of the greatest games of all times. Easy. What's next? No question. However, in the last nine or so years, it feels like in many ways, the quality of video games and especially exactly. AAA titles has declined. Yeah, the but why? Is so much more money is involved. New, innovative, and epic. No volume? Gaming as a medium no, has evolved lying. very quickly in the 35 or so years it's been around. And while there are so many great aspects to that? love about this hobby, just consider this a more pessimistic take on the state of gaming. So what is it that has caused the decline of gaming? No, it's not these old Flash cartoons, but they did inspire the name. It's the same thing that ruins so much of <laughs> this game world of ours. Insatiable greed. Exactly. It's all about greed, man. It's all about money. Implement microtransactions into Star Wars Battlefront 2. Just to clarify, these are my opinions. I'm not going to play more play before. Thank you, Dalva. If I get something wrong, please feel free to let me know, which I'm sure you all will. For every negative thing that's <laughs> you know happened in video games, you could argue an equally positive benefit has occurred. And that's a fair point. Greed is the driving... The one... Uh, I think he's gonna say that too. The one good thing though that gaming is in such a decline is that when... When it happens occasionally that someone makes a great game, the game... It's beautiful. Like, for example, Ghost of Tsushima, right? You, you don't... Your expectations are so low nowadays that when a good game comes around, you are like, man, nice. Uh, uh, GTA V, Red Redemption 2, stuff like that, man. Uh, dude, of when that decline. comes around, bro... But it gets tricky. Just great, man. Because greed, in this case, takes on several forms. Uh, no, fucking it's not car packs everywhere. No, it's Italian man with a ridiculous mustache. It's something both subtle and straightforward. Let's not waste uh, even any more deals except fucking intro. cards. Let's jump straight. I mean, I pay a lot this. of money every month for magic. <laughs> be honest. Receiving the decline. Warhammer Two was great. Yeah. In our heads, it's challenging and overwhelming to tackle the core issues game. that plague a multi-billion-dollar industry, with so many different companies, million, developers, billion. publishers, programmers spread all over the world. Todd, man, Todd. I fucking love this guy back in the day, man. Fucking Fallout, Skyrim, Oblivion, Morrowind. Oh, man. These games were so good. And then you do the Fallout thing. Like, why? Why? Is it possible to categorize and identify it's this It's the decline? money. It's the money, man. All we need to do is follow the money. So let me just list some things you probably noticed, and we'll elaborate on them down the line. One, an increase in buggy, glitchy games. Big budget releases often have a botched launch and are forced to rely on updates to fix their issues. Number two. Sorry, I wanna. What? Sorry. Botched launch and are forced. Think about what Battlefield 4 was 64 player multiplayer, giant maps, 1080p. Levution. What? That was changing the gameplay design in an emergent way. There's a chance there are things you are going to miss through the development cycle and you end up in a situation we had with Battlefield 4. Andrew Wilson, EA boss. Forced to rely on updates to fix their issues. Number two, an overabundance of remakes, remasters, and sequels. Number three, the corporatization of gaming. Yeah. The conduct of major companies, man. publishers, and developers. And of course, number four, the obvious influx of RNG loot boxes being forced. But they're, they're, they're slowly getting banned, right? Uh, Belgium was the first country where the court ruled against them for EA Games or some shit. Some people, uh, some institutions are slowly working against these loot boxes now. Forced into every genre of game and increasingly aggressive yes. monetizations. But the problem is people, people pay. And I, I gotta be honest, man. I just want to be honest. When I care about the video game, I pay, because I have a, I have money, right? I'm not poor anymore. I love Magic. I love World of Warcraft. I gave them a lot of money. I gave World of Warcraft a lot of money, man. I, I, I get it, man. I, in a way, fuck. I fucking get it. Yeah. The thing is, just always it should never be, uh, it should never be game changing. This like in World of Warcraft, you just get cosmetics. Well, you get money for items, but it should never be. Hey, if I pay money, I get ten percent more damage. That that is, dude. If you do that, you fuck, man. It could be that how much have you given to all? Uh, easy, hundred fifty or something. Well. Possibly we see the game industry as being worse. I gave like a thousand to Magic. Is all the disappointment but I don't regret we have that. caused simply by us growing playing older it. and more jaded? It's entirely possible the negativity we associate with modern gaming is outweighing the more positive innovations that have been made. Games look better, the stories What's more that, epic, from characters Stockade? are represented so realistically, animation vastly improved. 
My point is, try not to become too overwhelmed with... Yes, you can buy items and all, but that's not gonna make you kill a boss, and that's not gonna, get, not gonna make you better in PvP. Nostalgia for the glory days. And remember that your perception plays a huge part Keep in this Katos? Wow. Tiak what from do Stargate. and don't you have a problem with? That's for you to figure out. But now that we got a solid base for this topic, let's dive deep into the decline of gaming. Complacency. Pleased, especially with oneself or one's merits. Advantages, situation. Often without awareness of some potential danger or defect. I didn't know the word complacency, whatever. But what a great word. A word that really applies to so much of society. Not only gaming, but also politics, society, Twitter, left people, right people. What a great word. Complacency. Complacency is probably the biggest deterrent to innovation and quality game design. The perfect example is Valve. <laughs> Once known for their unconventional methods of game design and their repertoire of critics. Let's take a look here, man. Counter Strike, obviously amazing. Counter Strike, uh, yeah, just whatever. Day of Defeat, Day of Defeat Source, great. Deathmatch Classic, Dota 2, huge success, man. I, I have thousands of hours in that game. Gary Small, people love that. Half Life 1 and 2, obviously amazing. Half Life Alex, groundbreaking. Team Fortress, people love it. Left 4 Dead, just Portal, one of the uh, uh, highest rated games of all times, man. Man. Critically acclaimed releases. What happened? So many instant classics that to this day are viewed as some of the greatest games of all time. But what about since then? Looks like there's been a change of plan. Well, Valve has not made a new game since Portal 2. Eight not true, they ago. made Half of Alex. And the last time they even launched oh, maybe a new this IP video is older. was Left 4 Dead. That was 11 years ago. But let's take a quick look at the games they've launched since then. CSGO, a remake of Counter-Strike Source, which was a remake of the original Counter-Strike. Dota 2, a remake of the Dota. Ah, uh, yeah. If, if his point here is that remakes are bad, no, they're not. Counter Strike Global Offensive and Dota are ultra successful. I hope he doesn't make the point here that, that, um, yeah, Ramon that remakes are Warcraft bad. 3, Counter Strike Online 2, Koreans only. Counter Strike These are great Mix games. Zombies, free to play zombie shooter, no thanks. Left 4 Dead Survivors, Japanese only. The Lab, a series of eight VR mini games that was more or less just an experiment. Dota Underlords, a mobile version of Dota Auto Chess. Do I need to elaborate? This is the same company that made Half-Life 2, and yet Valve is just content with developing these unremarkable titles? Unremarkable? Ah, uh, what? How is Counter-Strike Global Offensive and Dota 2 unremarkable? Counter-Strike is the most played game on planet Earth, on Steam at least, and Dota 2 had the biggest prize pools of human history. What? Ah! Eh. You can really sum up the disappointment gamers have had with this company in the artifact. What? what no, I fully disagree. Who the fuck is disappointed? Dota and Counter Strike are amazing. Team Fortress, people love this yeah. shit. Everyone Millions was of so players. What? what? Was I mean, Artifact, yeah, okay. Artifact, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They came out with a new kick ass game. And when they revealed it, everyone lost all interest. Okay, that, that, that was really. It. Dude, nobody even uh, remembers anymore. It's like, uh, <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> now the question is, why did the Valve Dota stop card making game. actual games? What happened to their ambition? Well, as of March 2015, Valve makes 18 million dollars per month off Dota 2 alone. Yep. Valve is also, by ratio, one of the most profitable companies with the fewest employees in America. 360. Earning roughly 300, wow. 000. 360 people making two billion. That's insane. Dollars per employee. Wow. They make 30 percent of every sale off Jesus. Steam. They're just rolling in the. They make 30 percent right of every sale on Steam. The gold bars. If you're making tons of money selling the same thing for seven years and you're a I want to play Dota 2, man. Fuck. Well, why would you stop? Why would what you take the fire? risk and time to develop and sell a brand new product when you can simply maintain your current products and watch the profits Means get... That. I don't get this whole point here. Yet the point is, there's no innovation, there's only remakes. The, pr the thing is, though, that Valve is doing a great job at remakes. They're very successful. Uh, the, the, the main point should be shitty games being made right dude i'd rather have people make good remakes than shitty new games dump straight i cannot talk shit about wealth man oh hey they Bethesda, how's job. it going buddy didn't see hey, you there. yeah these guys man. selling skyrim 
There's no question that Valve kind of fans like will eat up behind. new game they Not put player out, counts, provided man. it's the type of Most game people game on want Steam for as a consumer. Almost a you'd decade. buy Portal 3, you'd buy Left 4 Dead 3, and you'd most certainly buy Half-Life 3. Isn't Long Left 4 Dead 3 actually and coming much dead, Half-Life 3 is a perfect example of complacency. Uh, I got nothing to say about Half-Life. Despite the critical acclaim and unrelenting hype for this title, you'd think Half-Life 3 would be at the top of Valve's priority list. But it never was. Instead, we're getting a VR game. And while it's cool, they're finally the making VR another Half-Life. The VR game was sick, though. All I can oh, think this is, game is the future, man. The this game is ridiculously want. cool. You see, Valve and even some other companies need to take lessons from Bono. You know, don't ever stop trying to be in the limelight. Keep pushing forward to infinity and beyond. Bethesda and Rockstar are another two clear-cut examples of how complacency has creeped into the video game industry. How the fuck is Rockstar- This video is super wrong, in my opinion. How the fuck is Rockstar complacency? Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5 are the best games in, in the whole 20s, man. Undisputed what? masters of reselling the same product in as many forms I possible. I very much disagree. After Grand Theft Auto 5, Rockstar basically did nothing except update the game. And yeah, put their old that's games a good point, platforms. but still... Until not five complacent. years later, they released Red Dead Redemption 2. Amazing Again, game. I'm not saying these are bad games, but if you look back in the five years from 2001 to 2006, they were putting out hot shit like GTA 3, Vice City, Midnight Club 2, Manhunt, Red Dead Revolver, The Warriors, and Bully. Rockstar used to experiment. Yeah, but times change. The market is very different now. If you make, if they make more money with the current system, that's just capitalism. Try new things, developing several IPs at a time, and building a library of games to their name. But now they've gotten complacent. Bethesda, meanwhile, had a five-year wait between Oblivion and Skyrim. That felt like for. I mean, they they but, used oh Skyrim my God, a lot, man. That's very true. Though. It. Skyrim was amazing. It flew off the shelves. And like Skyrim crazy. was really good. I fucking love Skyrim. It, that game now, is so good. It's been eight years since Skyrim, and we basically have no news, gameplay, or anything regarding Elder Scrolls. Oh, I'm scared for Elder Scrolls After Six. Vegas, I'm scared. It took Bethesda five years to come out with Fallout Four, a product that was very polarizing amongst the Fallout fan base, and then 76 releases. Do you see this decline? It's this complacency. This lack of desire to innovate and create new things that has led to some of our favorite game companies releasing new also not a thing is i he just said this lack of trying to be creative i think that the developers the nerds the real programmers they still have a lot of creativity but they have bosses that only think about money games that's also important to note i think and when they do, it's either something you don't care about, or it's artifact. just another sequel. What even is Artifact? Can I see one game of Artifact, please? What What the fuck is Artifact? Like, I love Dota. Artifact. Artifact. Uh, 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 Esports. I don't know. Like a tournament. Wait. Here's some gameplay. What the fuck even is Artifact? Okay, man, if I had a fucking mobile phone, maybe I will fucking play that shit. Despite Who knows? nearly every single game company falling prey to complacency, almost none of this applies to Nintendo, who have stuck to their roots and continue yeah, to evolve and Yeah, Nintendo's doing a great job, man. I just uh, read an interview. Away. In the latest Focus, I, I read this uh, Boomer magazine in Germany. There was an interview with the guy. Uh, yeah, what's his name? Thank you, Chromosome. Come on, I know his name. Uh, my, 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 uh... What's his name? Kojima. And the interview was like, um, he wants to keep entertaining hey, people. Nintendo is it's very still important doing to him and stuff. Way They're doing and a great a job, man. Yeah. money. While these other game companies are doing things the easy way. Because if it's broken, but makes a shitload of money, why fix it? Yeah, no, that's a good the argument, abundance though. abundance of remakes if you make money? and remasters. It's a fact that gaming has followed certain trends throughout the years. You had arcades where you played Kojima, quarters so Mijo, Miyamoto? In the NES days, it was Man, all about... My own Twitch chat doesn't know the name of the Nintendo guy, Alta? Nintendo, the guy. Mi Miyamoto-san, what the fuck? I don't know. Chad, are you guys fucking ridiculous? What the fuck's his name? Miyamoto? Where is he? I can't find it. Hideo Kojima. No, are you guys dumb? The inventor of Mario. Ah, Leute. The guy who made Ma also, Mario inventor. Wow, 2,000 viewers don't know the guy. Mario investor, Mario Gabelli. 
inventor. Jesus fucking Christ. Shigeru Miyamoto man. How does no one fucking know? I read an interview with this guy. He made fucking Nintendo and he he uh, he did uh Mario, this one. Lire, come on, chat. You know what the footy with tank is, but not thank you, made this. About side scrolling platformers. The SNES and Sega Genesis were all about graphics. Eventually we had online gaming, rhythm games, battle royale. So many trends have come and gone. <laughs> Some kind of have stayed, but occasionally a certain style of game is perceived as no longer profitable or appealing to the mainstream. You said Kojima, yeah, you could have sent me the right answer. Have long That's what I have for favor outside of Mario. In this case, instead of developing Crash a brand Bandicoot new was game such a good in a game. genre that's considered dead, companies will choose to remaster or remake their old ones. And when yeah. you look at that, they become hella popular. Who would have thought? Spyro reignited an insane trilogy were incredible remasters. If the remaster is so good, so if the I don't get his point. If the remaster is good and makes money, so what? But if you do uh, Warcraft Free Reforged, like, tuh. So successful. Yes, you should get you refunds and you should lose money. Even more happy to see a brand new game starting. Well, Final Fantasy VII uh, was also such a bad remaster. Coup, but there's been no such announcement. Job, why the fuck not, man? A remaster of Crash Team Racing. You this point, this remake's are lazy. With a remake. It doesn't matter Sometimes though. We live in a capitalist society. People gotta make money. Into something completely new, effectively remaking it to be as good as you thought it yeah, was. Yeah, the Resident Evil remakes are remakes sick. Remakes are man. a great way for new gamers to experience the magic of the past without the daunting task of playing something that looks like this. Or it can be a method for the developers to add on to their old project and give it some new bells and whistles. A remaster is Halo. capable of bringing. What is that? That's Age of Empires, right? Yeah games up to speed with several quality of life changes and making it the definitive way to experience the most played title. strategy game ever is that true when they port something to a new thing will walk a freeze the most played strategy game ever thank you cryptio like symphony of the night and other castlevania games being imported to xbox that shit's cool the problem i'll pay when for sure become more i miss it silent hill game silent hill was the creepiest shit ever man make new ones. Oh, that game was so it's fucking creepy how many different versions of Skyrim Bethesda has turned out? <laughs> Legendary Edition, Skyrim Special Edition, Remastered, Skyrim on I have Switch, them all. <laughs> Skyrim now with mods, oh. Skyrim for VR. In April 2013, Bethesda announced via their blog that they were moving, moving on, on from Skyrim and preparing to work on other projects. Yeah, that's a fucking laugh. Skyrim Pinball Edition. <laughs> At moments, some remasters just bank off your nostalgia and try to parade their old game as something new by slapping an HD at the end of the title. All I'm saying is, there weren't a whole lot of remakes or remasters back on the N64, PlayStation, Xbox, PS2, or GameCube. And that's because they were focused on creating new games. In fact, I can only but think also, of one counter argument back then, games are so much bigger Conquer now. Games are such a bigger reloaded, project. Which made the game look so 15 years ago, it was much easier to make a game than nowadays. Impressive to this day, and they even launched a brand new multiplayer mode that was just awesome. But nowadays, some remasters are just a shameless cash grab, where you can see a side-by-side -side comparison and notice no difference. Okay, there's no but difference. Hey, at Jesus. Least they added some extra dirt on the glass for BioShock Remaster. Oh, take fuck. my $40. Remember the original port of Dark Souls on Steam? Yeah, it was so fucking lazy and busted, they didn't even swap out the button prompts from the <laughs> Xbox 360 it's still version. The same button. I mean, holy shit. Oh, fuck. And From Software comes out with Dark Souls Remastered, an actual real port of the game. And they charge people $40 to $40. play Dark Souls with a revitalized PvP community. And even DS Remastered didn't bother to fix several game breaking oh, glitches highlighted in this wonderful Inferno Plus video. Companies will also take it a step further. What is that? EA turned Dungeon Keeper into Dungeon a blatant pay-to-win dumpster fire mobile game. Activision not only released Modern Warfare Remastered bundled with Infinite Warfare, but later added loot boxes and paid weapons into a game that didn't have those things in 2007. Some games like Sleeping Dogs, Last of Us, will come out with a remaster one or two years after it released. You Bullshit! Nah, they didn't do that. One or two years after release, bro, the that's like almost like a so lawyer should that look into this. That a one-year-old oh. game is now considered out of date. It's nice to they improve the game I, stability, yeah, 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 yeah. resolution, but is all that really worth buying the exact same product again? 
My point is a lot of companies aren't willing to take risks anymore. Dude, where's the difference, man? It's disheartening to remember a time when the original Xbox was a haven of original King awesome Jedi. titles. And now the Xbox One doesn't even seem to be competing. This trend of lazy remasters and game? remakes brings me to my next point. I don't think. No, there's nothing. Chasing trends. Early access. Hey guys, that is the worst thing. The quality of early access is the worst fucking thing, thing ever. Early. But it makes money. You can donate to my Patreon to help fund my willingness to sit at a computer and edit. In an effort to capitalize on whatever is currently most popular, plenty of game studios yeah. will just shamelessly that rip is, off that is really or bad. rush out some basic ass shell of a game. Remember Lawbreakers? Man, didn't do so hot trying to copy Overwatch. So how about Boss Key Productions just copies Fortnite and PUBG and launch a shitty battle royale? That should bring in the money. Radical Heights, good god. Oh wow, this battle royale craze has really taken off. Let's release a brand new game that's completely fucked. Abandon our old one and alienate our fan base. <laughs> the Calling 2 proved just how desperate some developers really two are. Two days after course, launch, the Calling 2 has two players. Before <sighs> porting it to Xbox, that's almost so fucking. Just, oh my god, Empire of Sin it. Burn it all. They somehow made it worse. It's kind of shocking how a company that made all the money in King Tut's castle didn't use they any of it to improve the game. Man. Instead, they just wanted more. And then Titanfall made advanced movement popular. Well, shit, of course Call of Duty and Halo has to adapt that into their games, even if the developers don't understand what makes the movement good, even if it compromises the design style and identity of their franchises. Just copy it. I don't care if it works, if it's unintuitive, janky, and sucks ass. Just copy them. This was, Do what this they're makes doing. Me sad, bro. A lot of these game series used to kind of just go their own way, and I miss that. The term early access has now been hijacked by companies who are too lazy to call their games complete exactly. or admit they're never going to finish them. It used to mean you had early access to the game, and often it was like an indie title. What is, what is, this? is that Star Citizen? That you understood that's Star Citizen. That game looks sick, man. Jesus. Needed additional funding. But now all it means is the game is going to be a buggy mess and you can't be mad at them because, hey, it's just an early access. Even if they make billions of dollars, Blue Hole and Epic will continue to call Fortnite and PUBG early access titles. Then you got all those shitty ass zombie survival games. <laughs> My buddy brought over seven days to die one time and after playing it for five minutes, I was like, dude, you got fucking scammed. Did you buy this shit from Jose in the back alley behind a strip club? Like what the fuck is this? Oh, man. Once esports really started to take off, developers started tailoring their games to be competitive. Everyone wanted their product to break into esports territory, and that can really mess with the Dad, project. Dad, who brings esports to Paradox, no, no, huh? Paradox, who brings it to your doorstep? Huh? Look at the face. Look at it. Look at it. Good. It's about as chasing you the most Paradox. popular trends in the cash flow. You get all these half-assed games releasing, and suddenly the desire to create something new is replaced with the desire to copy others. Games as a service, updates, online only, broken launches, etc. That's fucked, man. To... Uh, uh, that is so sad. Online only. My dad wanted to play. I gave my dad my old PC and I gave him Anno. Anno, what was that? I played an Anno game on stream like two years ago or something. And I was like, Dad, I'm going to give you Anno. And he had to make an account and he, he's an old man. He doesn't have his internet is wanky. He can't do it. So sad. Then Lisa's dad. I I'm chilling with Lisa's dad. We have like a birthday, and Lisa's dad is like, "Man, I got myself a new PC, and I got myself a, a dirt rally, Mac Mac re some rally game, some new one. Can you please do this for me, Tommy? And I want to do it for him. And he needs to make an account and stuff. And he's a boomer. He's fifty fucking years old. I don't want to make an account. No, no, no. Like fuck, let these old men play the fucking game, bro. The patch of game Stop, after God. Release was one of the biggest revolutions Fuck in game fame, development, yeah. allowing teams to continue their work before going gold. Bug fixes, balance updates, and more were now possible. Yo, can someone host Even when game? a game comes Anyone? out and you buy it on launch day, it has an update because the developers are still working on it after they started shipping copies. Nowadays, you can fix, tweak, and save your ass as a developer with this luxury of post-launch support. Season Overwatch 1. Overwatch is a prime they example always do seasons of now to get more money. Well. It needed several updates to become what it is today. Without them, most people... My best friend, uh, I, I, me and my best friend were talking about magic a lot, and he also likes magic. And I told him, hey, are you coming back to magic? And he just said, I can't. I can't afford it. It takes... He wants to spend no real-life money on magic, so it takes him six months to to get one deck. 
without money, man. And, and after six months, there's already a new meta. My friend Tony, true story. My friend Tony has saved months of in-game gold and magic to build a deck. Now, the new DLC came out with um, certain cards. And Tony made himself a deck. After six months of uh, collecting, he makes a deck. It was a... What was the fucking deck name? He made a deck with a card. Two weeks later, they banned his deck because it's broken. And he sits there like, man, I saved six months for this deck. And now it's banned. And he just quit. He just, and uh, you can't fucking, he has totally understandable, right? And like, fuck. And he doesn't want to come back to Magic because he can't the afford it, man. Constantly adding new content it's so and sad. Features to engage players and keep them coming back is good for both the gamers and the companies. However, it's when the games-as-a-service philosophy starts enveloping every stage of design... The fuck's this game? I'm getting like OCD here, man. What the, the game fuck? ...adding to it after launch that we see gaming decline. I spent a couple Halo of hundred for Guardians blue eyes and the meta the changed. ...had like a seven-month plan of content. Why didn't you work that into the three years of development you had? You compare Spec Ops and Modern Warfare 2 and 3, and there's no mistake that everybody prefers those versions to the 2019 version. I don't know anything about takes Call Infinity of Duty, Ward One month to get two missions out, 10 years ago, I just know everybody hates new one, with Cold War, nobody plays that. The difference is crystal clear in how games are developed. You look at- What does Doctor of Respect play nowadays? Like, what, what is, what is like the Battle Royale meta right now? I have no idea. Doctor Disrespect. What is what is, I can show him right his band. What does he play? He plays four, what is that? Valorant? He plays Valorant. Yeah, he just plays Valorant all day long. Oh god. Poor guy, man. What a sad life. Something like Kotor Has to play these shitty Halo games all day. And Smash Warzone. Bros. Melee. These games all had hellish development cycles that devoured the lives of the people working on them. These heroes sacrifice time These with their heroes. families just to complete the game when it was I supposed saw to be done Ornich so that me. we, what? the consumers, got the best product possible. Despite the many bugs, glitches, and that general is, uh, lack um, of uh, polish in these three highly anticipated sequels, they turned out phenomenal because neither Obsidian, Bungie, or Nintendo could depend on simply fixing the game after the fact. Not having that luxury put the pressure on. Yeah. Now with the, the internet luxury of post-launch well, support, compare the content from Halo 2 to Nights the latest the Republic. game, Guardians. Yeah, well, it's at Old Republic. launched Halo 5 at four game modes, the lowest in the series, and it took a whole year of updates to make Halo 5 a somewhat complete This makes me sad, package. bro. What Halo and it makes me not happy for the future. In three years of development back in 2004. But who are the main heroes that save us nowadays, especially us strategy gamers, paradox gamers? It's the modders. They can release shit games all they want. The modders, people out there that do this in their free time without any money, they are still, they're gonna save us, man. They're gonna drop the big mods, man, and they're gonna make this all great. Halo 5 needed an extra year after it was already out in 2015. But this isn't just and they exclusive don't even get paid, to man. Halo. It happens to every game series where the gears stop turning and something as simple as launching a game in a playable state becomes an urban legend, a, a myth. Bad Company 2 launches perfectly and works fine. Then DICE drops Battlefield 3, 4, and Battlefront 2, which all had nightmarish issues and simply didn't work. It gets so ridiculous to the point where you wonder if the games they put out are actually illegal because the product doesn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm, th I'm talking, I'm thinking about this so often. I have a bit of law school background. A lot of the shit has to be attackable by law. Like, man. Workers. I remember I read this article years ago where the new Battlefield, there was a guy who looked in the source code of Battlefield 4 and the old ones, and it was almost the same source code. They used the same code, they just changed some shit, man. Then you got something like COD World War 2, where even the menus didn't work. Like, the law has to get involved in this, dude. Out back in 2007, pretty damn good. This is scammy Mass shit. Effect Andromeda, 10 years later, somehow looked worse. It was a glitch-ridden disaster. Jesus. Diablo 1 and 2, absolute masterpieces. Diablo 3 is coming out. People have been waiting over a decade to experience Look this these game. Monkeys, man. It releases an error 37. You can't play the game until Blizzard figures this shit out. But and you had Dead Blizzard. Island where the developers completely fucked up and released the wrong version of the game. How does that happen? SimCity was made to be always online, except you couldn't connect to EA's shitty ass servers. Batman Arkham Knight was knowingly pushed out onto PC despite the publishers knowing it was a terrible port with horrific frame rate issues. It's a good game though. Very I'm not good saying game. every game from the glory days launched in a perfect state 
but these unplayable disasters happened far less frequently, and at the time, I was way more forgiving of them. And then we arrive at the Master Chief Collection, which was a testament to just how broken you could release a game and somehow not be investigated by the better this business game, This video must be older this days, he doesn't include so unplayable. Yet. I'm surprised there was no class action lawsuit filed. The new cutscenes by Blur were jaw-dropping, but it's hardly any consolidation when nothing worked. Menus were fucked. Game glitches everywhere. Impossible I mean, at this point, you literally games. ranking system should involve lawyers. Resetting. But who's going to pay three, them? Four, three needed like three the or community four or? years to make MCC a consistently video, he know about playable <laughs> game. Three to four years after I bought the game, I was finally able to play it the way they promised I could. So Halo 2 Anniversary will contain the original Halo 2 multiplayer exactly as it shipped 10 years ago. Though this is a subjective point, take a look at these MMORPGs. World of Warcraft changed the gaming landscape as we knew it and really gave rise to the games as a service philosophy. I, I, why is my body shaking? I don't know what's happening. With monthly subscriptions, new expansions, it was a nice source of cash flow. And for players that enjoyed it, was the amazing, game, man. It was the first the three add ons was just so good. Been consistently supported for Unbelievable like years, game. And that's great. I still love but this game, dude. Important it just point eats your life away, though. Warcraft as a series has been an MMORPG longer than it has been a real time strategy. Despite three games with multiple expansions, the reason Warcraft 4 does not exist is because WoW does. Again, I disagree. RTS games don't sell anymore. The meta of the global community has changed. People play people play battle royale games and stuff. And nobody likes strategy games right now. Again, I, I'm, I disagree. A little bit. Similarly, the reason why Knights of the Old Republic Warcraft 4 does not very exist well. is because Dalton the Chen. Old Republic does. Elder and they have the slot of strategy games yet, covered with software for the last 10 years. Thank you, Coldmind. For better or worse, these incredible series of games have converted to the games as a service philosophy. They've turned their backs on their roots. EA is infamous for shutting down several game studios, including Visceral, who were working on a single player Star Wars game. But because single player games can't really be made into a service, EA saw this venture as not as profitable and shut it down. EA did Jedi Fallen Order though, right? That was just single player, no service. That was just good, right? It's actually surprising when something like Jedi Fallen yeah. Order oh. comes out with no <laughs> caveats. And that was a, a great, game. great game. That's what you should do, EA. Just a fucking good game, man. And you know what? I don't even mind if you have little shop with cosmetics. Shit, oh, fuck, I need to go. I wouldn't even mind if you have a game like Fallen Order and you have a little cosmetic shop, you know? So some dude, hey, if you pay us four ninety nine, you get an you got an you get a special uh, lightsaber. I, I get that, man. Sure, if some guy wants to do it, but at least have a good game. That was a good game, man. But in that the was six really or so fun. years, EA has had the rights to Star Wars. This is the first single player game they've put it's out. A very good Flashback game, man. Flashback to the early two thousands. Oh baby, Jedi. Jedi Knight. Th this I, I said it a million times on stream. This you kids don't know anything. This game was ah oh, the greatest Star Wars game of all times. I spent so many years in the multiplayer, man. A fucking amazing Academy, game. Academy, Republic Commando, Kotor one and two, uh, episode three game, Lego Star Wars, that is, Hunter, that was Obi Wan, Force Unleashed, Battlefront one and two, Empire at War. <sighs> Star Wars games were off the fucking hook. They were but so good, man. Sometimes I feel bad for the younger viewers because you never goes through are more impactful saw than the actual these release. good games. And it's the ship it now, fix it later mentality that is allowing companies kind of to turn out sometimes. so many titles that suck straight ass when they come out. A video game should never be a gamble where the consumer doesn't know if it's going to function or not. Corporatization anti-consumer yeah that is Probably the, worst, the thing. worst thing about the decline of gaming is the corporatization of it the game industry is becoming more and more controlled by some board of directors who don't see this hobby as you or i do they aren't thinking how can we make the best game possible how can we make our fans happy they're thinking how can we make the most money with the least amount of effort there are investors to please deadlines to meet Game development used to be just a bunch of nerds pooling their talents and creativity yep. to make something incredible, something they would want to play. Corporatization has been sucking the life and soul out of gaming, and this is illustrated by the complete lack of originality in the cover art of games. Check out this video by Nakey Jakey, it's really good. But it showcases a greater point, the lack of soul. 
It'd be foolish to condemn all pre-order bonuses, microtransactions, DLC, etc. Because only a Sith deals in absolutes. <laughs> but you're the consumer. What do you want? Do you want cool, meaningful, cosmetic unlockables that showcase your accomplishments? Okay, what's the ideal way for the player to unlock them? Ask yourself this question first. Is this good for the player? Is it good for the player to unlock gameplay altering abilities or cosmetic items in monetized randomized loot boxes? Is that a form of progression and unlocks that is beneficial Dude, he's to the fighting player? Yoda? Of course not. Is Boba Fett? So how I think is that? Oh, Yoda's gone. Because oh, what the, the fuck happened there? The Thank you, Sims. And the quality of the experience is secondary to what's most profitable. Back during the 360, PS3, and Wii generation, players noticed there was a lot more downloadable content than the previous generation. In fact, the GameCube didn't even connect to the internet. <laughs> but now it seems like loot boxes are far more numerous. That's because companies realized DLC was only a one-time purchase. But what if there was a way to turn players into payers? Consistently doing that would yield high results. Then you got all those season passes where companies Battlefield, want you to put up fifty Battlefield dollars is, based on a promise. I mean, look at you want you want to see the you want to see the solo of a Twitch chat right here. Kinda the same name, both purple, and then Battlefield Battlefront Two is shit even now. Battlefront Two is amazing. This right here is what Twitch chat truly is, man. It's just you guys are never on the same fucking video games become more uh, and more expensive to make. Tree. The what? price of a new release has stayed the same for decades. The duality of one. Any business, big or small, needs to make a profit. The length some companies this go game? to to monetize their games is absurd. Sometimes being so greedy to the point where they will compromise the design of their game. 343 and Creative Assembly went so far in this direction, crafting a mode specifically to integrate loot boxes into Halo Wars 2 and create a pay to win model madden and fifa ultimate teams yeah. wow those are so yeah. cool ruined by pay to win loot boxes yeah battlefield one if you and don't four, put money into these games like short... fifa i know a lot about fifa if you don't buy if you don't put a lot of money into your uh loot boxes you will never be play with no team but then i feel like why don't you players why do you young kids playing fifa not just play normal mode where you don't have ultimate team is it because there's no ranking or something just go Think online choose your team second. The designers created the system of XP, we actually do that? how it is earned, how much it takes to unlock things, and then decided to monetize a way for players to skip it entirely. Thank you, Bungie where's the whale? literally cutting and reselling parts of Destiny 1 and 2 as DLC, making shaders oh, consumable career, career so mode? players will have to buy them mode. again, was not a decision made for the benefit of the player. Fours of five offering just as many payable cars what as one you earn like in a game. game show. The this list is of a fucking DLC for the Sims alone game. is fucking staggering. Middle Earth, Shadow of War, a single player. Uh, Lisa's also part of this, man. Lisa uh, never plays three games. She only plays one game, The Sims 4. And when I see Lisa play The Sims 4, there are so many DLCs, man. So much. And they're so expensive. There's a DLC that gives you like two hour content for 20 euros Fair and game. shit. Chose the loot box like, hey, you want to have a cat? 20 euros, please. To players. Think even more. Dead Space 40. Interrupting the game to, Just to get ask a cat, you to man. buy more parts. Train Simulator 2015 offering over 4,000. Thousand dollars of DLC, purchasable weapons in Black Ops 4, giving people an advantage. Really? Microsoft charging you to remove ads on solitaire, <laughs> fucking microtransactions in, in solitaire. solitaire. <laughs> then for some games, it can get so bad that functional microtransactions become more important than a functional game. I couldn't get into matches in COD World War II when it came out, but you bet your ass I could buy loot boxes. And then Fallout 76. Wow. Easily one of the most embarrassing, blatant, empty cash grabs the industry has ever seen. Do you, as a player, want to have sections of the video game you bought sealed into randomized crates that are paid for with real money? Hell no. There's always a better alternative. Titanfall 2 is the shining example. It might not make the most money, but there's no bullshit involved. What you see is what you get, and the game isn't any worse or better off because of it. Companies have tried seemingly every slimy, underhanded tactic to get you to pay just a bit more. Metal Gear Survive had the audacity to charge people $10 for an extra save slot. In Modern oh, Warfare 2, you had to grind for those bro, extra that custom is, that class is, slots. Dude, but in recent the law. games, you can just buy do something. That's that not okay, now, man. Valve and Bluehole 
opened up avenues to skin betting, selling and trading with that other so players. That is so sad, man. All these kids wasting money in betting and skin the betting. Notorious shitlords like so sad. And Pro yeah, <laughs> I don't spit money. on these people, man. Fucking the guy with the blue hair and shit, man. Scamming their fucking viewers for money. <laughs> I spit on you, Alta. Thank you, uh, Fosh. Unbelievable, and they're still around, man. Isn't that guy still on fucking YouTube? What's his name? What was his name? Fucking. What was his name, man? The fucking syndicate. Syndicate. Is he still around? Does he still make fucking. Still makes views? Fuck you, Alter. Look at that, man. Can't even get Tommy K views. Still around, though. Tuh. Fuck this, man. Trash people. Off this infamous CSGO lotto scandal, the increasingly aggressive monetization for Twitch of admin. video games had gotten so for. out of hand I that it attracted anyway. the attention he of said several scam my people. world governments. I mean, if you look at those leaked patents by Activision, it tells you everything. The intent is right there. Mm. Adhering to these patents, they want to make you as addicted as possible to spending money. They want to control you. That's why Bungie decided to throttle how much XP you got. I bet they wouldn't have done that if they weren't I mean, how far you have to go as a content creator to, to scam your own viewers into buying something like your fake skin website? Alter, that is a whole new level of mafia. And no repercussions. No one is permabanned, man. Uh, this is my apology video. Here's my fucking dog and my fucking two dollar, two million dollar mansion. Right, <laughs> engrams. The decline in gaming has manifested in so many different ways, and it hurts to talk about. The game industry- Streaming while was scamming your subs? That was scamming myself, okay? Fuck you. I knew and love has Look just at my gotten dog, guys. complacent with Look lazy dog. titles, trend-chasing garbage, half-assed remasters, corporatization, over-monetization, and a lack of drive to EA create games, that something that picture kind of looked like equal from Mr. Service Robot. and early access become crutches for developers to lean on. And when fans get upset at how dysfunctional and empty their latest releases, or wonder why game-breaking issues continue to exist, they use early access, or we're working on it, as their shield. Don't get me wrong, the good stuff is still out there, but you have to find Phantom it amongst all the band. noise. Okay, I don't know but what it is, but good, sounds good. With changed for the worse in gaming, it's starting to feel like a soulless assembly line production. And the way companies treat their consumers Imagine is recoil. making me lose <laughs> faith in this industry. And that is how gaming has declined. I mean, in the end, we have to all ask ourselves, what can we do, right? And uh, especially since since Malhala, you guys always see me talking about Valhalla a lot. I'm gonna change something up in my life, and that is, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna predict something. Soon, one day, they will announce the next Assassin's Creed. Gonna be big one. Assassin's Creed Japan, I Edo period, Samurais and Ninjas. Wow, that sounds good. I'm not gonna buy it. I gotta stay strong there. The, the next Paradox thing, uh, that, that's, that, that's from an outside developer, like for example, Empire of Sin, I'm not gonna buy it. I, I, I have uh, Vampire Masquerades for free, but I will never buy it. We have to stop giving money to this stuff, man. I have to stop giving money to this stuff. It's so important.